More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. If you find yourself struggling to find your breakthrough and frustrated with your results, join my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. It's a private video coaching call every other week where I'll be teaching the skill of the week followed by coaching. JCIC members one-on-one live for observation. All calls are recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. Members will have access to the private JCIC Facebook group where they can ask questions, interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, the other JCIC members, and receive any support required in their breakthrough process. When you enroll, you'll receive the new members welcome kit, which includes my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, my Breakthrough Accelerator course, my digital coaching program, and so much more, all for $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars. On a beautiful Tuesday, first Tuesday of November 2018, with the More Heart Than Talent Facebook Live. As I've said numerous times, I'm getting being comfortable with the forum of being live versus the Tuesday night More Heart Than Talent Mindset call. So no longer call, it is live. So welcome to the live this afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am here in beautiful Northern California in the GMS office. Content for today is on procrastination. In 2010, I wrote a book called From Procrastination to Production. I self-published that book and in 2011 sold the rights to that book to a company called Career Press. Career Press is a very, very accredited publication firm who just printed John Asraf's new book. It's it's, it's an outstanding book. So I'm going to cover some of the content from that content. It was groundbreaking content for me back in the late 2000s that went into the book from procrastination to production. A few quick announcements and we'll move into the live portion of today's call. This Saturday, November 10th, I will be in beautiful Spartanburg, South Carolina. If you don't know where Spartanburg is, it's a beautiful little southern city about 45 minutes from Charlotte, North Carolina. I will be there with an event hosted by Bridget Bartley. So it'll be my absolute privilege and pleasure to be able to share space and stage with Bridget, who's one of the exceptional women I've ever had the privilege of coaching, mentoring, collaborating with. And Bridget absolutely crushed her portion of LinkedIn at the Protégé Writer Speakers Workshop this Friday in Stockton, California. Now, next Saturday, I will be, let me see, next Saturday, I will be in Orange County, California with Marissa and Doug Campbell, who incidentally crushed a car show this last weekend in Las Vegas called SEMA. Look up Doug Campbell or Marissa Campbell and look at what they're doing in free enterprise in network marketing, direct sales, and then their own businesses, exceptional business owners that I will have the opportunity to collaborate with. And then that brings us up to Thanksgiving. Then right after Thanksgiving, I'll be in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, December 1st with Diane Hughes-Hunt. Diane has hosted, this will be the anniversary of her first event one year ago, 2017, in New Jersey. So number five for Diane, thank you very much. Let's move into the inspirational portion of today's call. And I have great content for you today regarding what procrastination means. Procrastination in Latin means procrastinari. That's the pronunciation of the word. And the definition of the the word in Latin is to avoid. And if you have avoidance tendencies, it's going to be a direct correlation to the events that shaped your feelings that you either repress or suppress. Now, this is exceptional content today that I'm going to share with you. There's There's a distinct difference between these two. So repression and suppression. Repression are the events that you forgot about. Repression are the events that you hold on to that you don't you hold on to. When you tell yourself, I had, a re- I had a really good childhood, but you're sabotaging yourself over and over. And when you tell yourself that I have a bad memory, I don't remember my childhood. I don't remember anything that happened. My whole childhood is a blur. Any multitude of situations 
that you don't recall. You don't remember who you went to school with. You don't remember your grades. You have a distinct memory block about events from your childhood. So that means we tend to repress these situations, not remembering, not understanding, not knowing. Then our communication style is, I guess, I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, okay. Now, suppression is a similar energy, however, distinctly different. Suppression is we make the same mistake over and over, knowing better, but we continue to perpetuate the same set of feelings because emotions have a corresponding response. We attract to our reality people and situations to fulfill our feelings either of anxiety, fear, and doubt, or feelings of consciousness. Now, when you're in consciousness, the four words of consciousness are aware, that is aware, know, understand, understand, and trust. These are the four words of consciousness, aware, know, understand, and trust. Now, when you know, you know. When you know, you are certain. When you know, there is no doubt. And when you're in consciousness, which has no shape or form, you won't be avoiding. You will be in flow. And in flow, you will be in a relaxed body, in action, creating results, and living in the solution. Now, in a flow state, there's no avoidance. In a flow state is direct correlation of being in esteem. Esteem and consciousness have similarities because they have no shape. They have no form. And so that's an energy when you walk into a room and you're in esteem with a regard for self. You love self without feeling guilty, anxious, arrogant, or in control. You're able to be in a relaxed body. You're not trying to control an outcome that hasn't happened. You have a, you have a very relaxed focus on what's right in front of you. It's more of a focus like this. Now, most people's focus is like this. They have no focus. They're focused on nothingness. And their communication style fosters a non-committal communication style. Now, as you have a better understanding of why you do what you do, then you have a better understanding of why you avoid. The most common commonalities of avoidance is anxiety about an outcome that cannot be controlled. Now, I'm going to look at some of the content that I laid out for you for this live today. And I'm just going to go down it in sequential order so that you can have a better understanding if you're following along on the email that... My team sends out every Monday and Tuesday so you can have a so you have a better understanding of the cause that creates the effect of why you do what you do. Now you've heard me say this if you follow me. If you don't understand why you do what you do, you will continue to recreate the same set of feelings which have a corresponding response over and over to fulfill feelings of abandonment, rejection, anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection overwhelmed feelings, grief, and apathy, which comprises the emotions that create anxiety, fear, and doubt. That is where avoidance is. The seeds of avoidance are a direct reflection of the events that you hold on to. You either suppress them or you repress them. Repressing means you don't understand them. Suppressing means you know better, but you keep doing the same, same thing over and over, which leads to a term called escape. What many people do to avoid is they escape. They escape by watching a video. They escape by watching movie. They escape by going to the gym. They escape by educating themselves. They medicate. They medicate by educating. They medicate themselves. They over medicate themselves with education so they can educate themselves to avoid not making a mistake. And what many people do is they avoid failing. They have a failure consciousness, meaning they put more energy into not failing than the energy required to master the emotions and master the skills of success in any endeavor. So if you own a business from the comfort of your home or you're a real estate agent or you're going into an office and you require sales, branding, and marketing skills, there's a high probability because you're new at it, you're going to be avoiding it. It's conditional behavior. It's not normal. Normal, you have to stop doing this. This is, I want to write this down. What many people do is they do this. They try. That means tomorrow is really yesterday. They try to make... Now, make is a word of force. They try to make. They try to make. Or they try to get. They try to make sense. Consciousness does not make sense because consciousness is not about sense. Consciousness is about understanding. Consciousness is awareness. Consciousness is knowing. Consciousness is trust. Consciousness does not respond to sense because sense is a direct reflection of your 
analytical, egoic left brain that you were learned to be educated, that you medicate yourself in, believing that one day if you just educate yourself more, if you just get more education, that that's going to be the key to your success. Although education is an important component of transformation, knowing and trusting is a much more powerful energy. Vibrationally, in trust, in awareness and understanding, now you move into the field of consciousness. Once you're in consciousness, now you have access to the conscious universe. That conscious universe opens you up to a different set of content than the educational curriculum provides for you. Because in consciousness, it becomes cosmic. And in, in, in quantum, means you can, where some is greater than whole of parts, you can skip over phases on the journey because of your enlightenment, because of your awareness. And that's the situation where your attractor factor changes. Who and what you attract, who shows up becomes different of where you were a year or two ago because of your growth, your transformation, your recovery, but most importantly, your consciousness. Now, avoidance has no consciousness because avoidance lives in a very low vibrational energy called anxiety. Avoidance lives in a very low vibrational energy called fear. And the highest level of avoidance is doubt. Now, a large percent of society lives in doubt, in avoidance, and they'll go in and out of it. They'll go into a result and they'll go out of a result. They'll collect a result and they'll be worried that they won't be able to create the result. They'll have a good day and they start worrying about tomorrow, about duplicating tomorrow, and they get so overwhelmed about tomorrow that they stop performing today, and then they end up at the refrigerator, they end up at the pharmacy, they end up in some place to address being overwhelmed. So they find a psychotropic drug, they find a GMO, a genetically modified organism, something with trans fat in it, or they go to a hookah lounge or they do whatever they do to be able to medicate their emotions. And once you're addicted to medicating your emotions, but now you're suppressing them. You're suppressing them because they're repressed. Now you're going to be avoidance. Now I am breaking it down for you. Now what I'm showing you is the cause that creates the effect. Now that's the effect. Now the cause are going to be the events that shape the feelings. Now, in my coaching, and I've coached 60,000 hours, I'll even write that down, 60,000. What does that mean? That means 10 times the, no, that's that's six times the 10,000 hour habit. That's what that means in quantum physics, six times the 10,000 hour habit. That is how many coaching hours in repetition and experience I have been able to coach in the last 21 years. It's actually more than that, but I round it down just to be just to be being. I've also coached 12,000 clients, 21 years, coaching consistently around 10 to 12 hours a day, becoming very skilled at that part of my vocation. So it gives me great context and then reality of why people do what they do. Why do you avoid? That's what you want to ask yourself. Well, you don't avoid because you're an avoider. You avoid because of events you hold on to and you keep perpetuating the same situation because here's the word that an addict hates to acknowledge. It's, it's actually two words, T-H-E-P-A-Y-O-F-F, -F, the payoff. The payoff becomes the pleasure pain syndrome. What many people do is they create a similar situation to fulfill a neurochemical feeling they're emotionally addicted to, which creates the payoff. What's your payoff in that? There is no payoff. I hate what I do. Well, you, that may be true, but if you really, if you the pain was great enough, then you'd let go of it. But what many people do is they medicate the pain and they suppress the pain and they create the same situation over and over. The objective is to be able to let go. That's where you separate your feelings from the events. So when you find yourself avoiding, you're procrastinating. Then oftentimes you will foster procrastination by your word choices. I'm the world's worst procrastinator. This always happens to me. I'm late for everything. I'm always overwhelmed. Unfortunately, this is how many people communicate with self about why they do what they do. Now, there's a link between low self-esteem and procrastination. The link between low self-esteem and procrastination is a direct reflection of the events. So if you're not good enough to be able to ask, deserve, and receive in your own business, there's a high probability that you will feel competent and confident working for someone else. But you put someone who's never been in free enterprise or produced results for self, and they tend to overwhelm themselves. I don't know what to do. I don't know who to be. I don't even want to tell me what I should be doing. I'm so overwhelmed, being overwhelmed. I'm avoiding, avoiding. I don't know what I'm avoiding. I don't know why I avoid, but I avoid to avoid. 
What many people avoid is, is changing. And changing is the most common commonality of why people avoid. So if you've been violated, traumatized, do not feel good enough. If you hold on to a series of events that are either repressed or suppressed and don't know why you do what you do and end up holding on to excess weight, end up being medicated through the pharmaceutical industry, or you find yourself avoiding using the telephone as a means to create an outcome, or you can't write content, and because you're so afraid of what people are going to think, or you're not able to blog or do any situations like this, it's because you have acute anxiety about being rejected and abandoned based on unresolved issues from your past that creates a corresponding emotion. So if you can't find someone to violate you or reject you, then you'll be critical with self so you can violate self. This is what, this is what an emotional addict does over and over. So when I'm talking about addictions, I'm not talking about drugs and alcohol. I'm conveying to you how emotionally addicted most of society is. Anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, and overwhelmed feelings. So when the book Procrastination Cure came out, it became a minor bestseller. It's been around the world. It's published in four different countries. And I get a residual check for it twice a year from a company called Career Press. It's a minor bestseller. You get a few thousand dollars a year. And what that book does it is, is assist people to understand the cause that creates the effect of chronic avoidance. Now, the reason that most people avoid is to not change, followed by they're not sure if they can control an outcome, followed by they're not sure if, they, if they, they, their self-talk says, I don't want to offend someone, make a mistake, get in trouble, say the wrong thing. I'm not sure if I can put myself out there. Who's going to follow me? Why would anyone want to read what I wrote? This is the self-talk that creates avoidance because there's a direct link between low self-esteem and procrastination. Because when you're not good enough, you reinforce that by avoiding letting go. The, the cause of low self-esteem are going to be events that shaped your feelings, traumas in childhood, abandonments, rejections, playground incidents, uh, being held back in a grade, being called names, traumatized in junior high, grade school, low grades, uh, being labeled as a slow learner, uh, divorces, addictions in the household. Because what happens once you grow up in an, in an environment that you don't feel safe, so if you don't feel safe in an environment, your body starts to give off a corresponding response in that. So that means your body starts to flex and flinch to the stimulus that you're now reacting to. Recovery is a different energy because recovery, you move into a place called response, which is responsibility. It means your body responds differently to the stimulus because you feel more comfortable with self. When you're uncomfortable with self, you will continue to avoid making the mistakes. Now, that's the direct that's the direct connection to low self-esteem and procrastination. Procrastination is also well-versed in not only not being responsible, but also being rebellious. Many people procrastinate and they wait to the last minute to create that neurochemical high of going, oh, I pulled it off. I got everything together and I cleaned my desk up and tomorrow will be a wreck again. I'll do it all over again in three months. I'll wait till the pain is great enough. Now, chronic avoiders oftentimes wait till the pain is great enough. They wait till the very last minute. They file extensions on taxes. They rush to the airport. They're late for everything they do. They wait till the last minute to study. They cram for tests. This type of personality is typically not methodical, systematic, organized or detailed. If you're saying you're going, yet yeah, that is me, world's worst procrastinator. Well, don't edify that you're the world's worst. Edify that you're in the process of recovery. Give yourself a space and peace. Elevate yourself above doubt into consciousness. Be aware and understand why you do what you do. Then you can separate your feelings from the events. Perfection perpetuates low self-esteem. Now there's in the book Procrastination Cure, I break down one of the personality types of Procrastination is a personality type called the neurotic perfectionist. I'm a perfectionist and to a, to a point sometimes of neuroticism, but I'm also very practical in it. Practical enough that I can be perfect where it doesn't hinder me from creating a result, a solution, or success, but still in a state of perfection that I love a task well done. I'm organized, I'm detailed, I'm systematic, and I'm methodical. And many people will misconstrue this. Oh, wow, you have OCD. Actually, I don't have OCD. I'm very systemized and organized and detailed 
and I'm methodical. I mean, that's how I communicate with myself. I don't edify that I'm neurotic. I don't edify that I'm overwhelmed. I don't edify that it's never good enough. I don't communicate like self. Now, it wasn't always like this. I was an addict for 14 years, had very low self-esteem for all 14 of those years. In the first two, three, four, five years of recovery, I lived on a term called confidence, and I felt self-confidence. I was reward and recognition conscious. Groundbreaking content came out for me in 1988 when John Bradshaw released the book. It was about in 86, but I saw it in 88 called Healing Your Inner Child, which Bradshaw was the first author to really come public that he'd been violated and he was able to speak in an open forum on public television in the late 80s. And that really rocked the spiritual community that I was just entering into, the spiritual recovery community in 1988, which was 30 years ago. So that book was very valuable to me, as was Heal Your Body by Louise Hay, which where I learned the term uh, mind-body connection to the events that shape feelings. As you begin to understand these terms of quantum physics, brain chemistry, as you begin to separate your feelings from the events, your emotional energy, your etheric emotional white light energy begins to change. You emanate a different set of emotions. As you elevate your feelings into self-esteem and you separate yourself from low self-esteem and you separate yourself from the events that shape your anxieties, you're elevating your consciousness. Your self-talk, you're not as critical or not even critical, and you're able to pass on desserts, drinks, and situations that you know aren't good for you, and you're able to not have to fight with this, wrestle it, and hold off on it, and white knuckle it, and all these other things that chronic addicts and chronic relapsers wrestle with. So avoidance is an addiction. Procrastination unequivocally is addiction driven by low self-esteem, recreating the same situation over and over to fulfill feelings specifically of disappointment. And that disappointment is versed in the emotions of rejection, abandonment, grief, and or grief, apathy, guilt, and shame. Those are the emotions that drive avoidance so you can fulfill your feelings. So self-defeating habits, poor use of time, indecisiveness, perfectionism, fear, worry, and anxiety. These are all situations that create chronic avoidance. So fear, anxiety, and doubt. That's, where the, that's the energy that most of society lives in. Now, if, this, if you find yourself in this situation, frequently, today is an exceptional day to let go. You don't have to hit rock bottom. The pain doesn't have to be so bad that you can't take anymore. A simple commitment, a decision, a decision to be your best you, a commitment to your own excellence, letting go of events that shape your feelings. This is not a how do I situation. This is an I am commitment. I am committed to midnight tonight to end this day without being critical of self. That would be a breakthrough. That would be recovery. That would be consciousness. That would be a victory. But you're not looking to win or lose in this game. You're looking to be able to be be to be able to be relaxed in a relaxed body. You're not in a win-lose dichotomy. You're looking to create a new solution for self. As you begin to live in the solution, you'll stop focusing on the problems. What many people do is they focus on the problem. I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. I don't want people to think of me like this. And that, that becomes their self-talk. And they spend their day avoiding failing, but really they're avoiding succeeding. And until you let go of the control that keeps you in control, of being out of control, you perpetuate the same set of feelings over and over. So in neutralizing self-criticism, which is point number five on the seven points of procrastination, the psychology of procrastination, so point number five is neutralize self-criticism. Well, self-criticism is going to come from being criticized as a child. And as you're able to easily and effortlessly understand the cause of you grew up in a critical household, you're criticized by your brother, your sister, you're the golden boy, the golden girl, there's a lot of pressure on you, your brother, your sister dislikes you because of a situation because you came along and you're taking more energy than they used to get or you have better grades than they do and the light's on you, that's what you believe, that's what you're told, and then you're violated by someone in your household, well, criticism becomes a way of life. I'm so stupid. This is, I can't believe I did this. I always do this to myself. When you're highly critical of self, you'll also be highly critical of others. It also sets you up to attract perpetrators, violators, and people who will shine a light on you. If you're also a people pleaser in this situation, seeking approval from others, this is also a situation where you'll so seldom ever 
receive the accolades you deserve because of how critical you are of self. And what you're looking is for someone to validate you rather than validating self. And self doesn't even require validation. Self requires love. Is you're able to love self without approval from anyone else, is you're able to love self in spite or despite results or recognition, now you're elevating your consciousness. And that's the type of energy that you begin to love self. That's what letting go is. You're able to separate your feelings from events as you're moving into a higher level of energy. Consciousness is an energy. And in that type of energy, you're going to attract your reality more frequently, people of like mind. Now, this breaks down to a process in numerology called the law of the few. The law of the few are what create the quantum leaps. Two plus two equals 16. The law of the few are the few people who are of like mind, provided you're in that energy, provided you're in conscious energy, you'll attract your reality more frequently. What is conscious energy? Well, consciousness is understanding, it's awareness, it's knowing, and it's trust. Those four words are what form and shape a shapeless energy called consciousness, because consciousness has no shape or form. Consciousness does not receive medals. It does not receive Oscars, trophies, Hall of Fame, any of these situations. It does not receive recognition. It doesn't feed on it. But if you require recognition and rewards for your identity and your ego, well, that's self-confidence. And although confidence is a component of success, esteem is the most important component of success, because when you emanate love, you'll attract your reality, people more frequently that are in a similar energy. Now you're looking at that law of the few. This becomes synchronicity. People show up easily and effortlessly. And practice self-acceptance. That means accept self despite or in spite of any awards, recognition, or acclaim. Accepting self means you're not performing because you are self. And you don't word, this is the classic word, authentic. I'm out there being authentic. Well, does that lead me to believe that before you were authentic, you weren't authentic? And if you have to edify being authentic, then you're not authentic while you're edifying being authentic. If you were authentic, you wouldn't have to edify it. I mean, people go, I'm being authentic. I'm being authentic. Well, that's freaking great, dude, but just be it. I mean, a B state doesn't require your own recognition. I mean, I'm being self would be a much more empowering statement than being authentic. And I hear people say this frequently, I'm being authentic. Now, you know, one of my pet peeve words, being authentic. But I mean, I understand the context of authentic. It means self. But when you are self, you don't have to edify self because you know that you know and you understand. Then you're not focused. You're not trying to be. So when you try, when you try, you've already failed because tomorrow's really yesterday. It means you're putting pressure on self to be something that you're not so you can so you can get the same fulfillment over and over production consciousness the last point it means that when you relax without any anxiety that's productive when you're able to rest without any tossing and turning or worry that's productive when you're able to produce and you produce results that's productive but if you don't produce a result and you're still in the action of it that's productive so production takes on a different form and shape of consciousness, meaning nothingness, but in production consciousness, you're productive being you because you're being you. That's productive. You're productive in a level of consciousness, not holding on to the past, not worrying about a future, and you're able to be in a flow state. That's prosperity, prospero. Once again, the procrastination cure, cure you can find this on my website, goldenmastermind.com. Under products, you can also find it. You can get my procrastination for free. Now, you, you could purchase it or you can receive this for free. Now, here's how you can receive this for free. This is right here. It is get my book, the procrastination, get my book, the procrastination for free. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash pro goldenmastermind.com forward slash pro Jeffrey Combs, president and founder, golden mastermind seminars incorporated. And before I let you go today. I consistently offer 20 minutes of free insight, one-on-one -on -one coaching for those of you who have never accessed it. If you're watching this content for the first time or for the 400th time and you've never received the value of a free 20-minute coaching call or 20-minute coaching insight, send me a Facebook message in Messenger with your phone number and I will respond to you very, very quickly. Looking forward to the month of November, one of my favorite months, Thanksgiving, is, the, and we have that great Thanksgiving weekend 
coming up in about three weeks. So Spartanburg, South Carolina this Saturday with Bridget Bartley. Next Saturday, I will be in beautiful Orange County. Actually, I'll be in Laguna, in, in the Laguna area. And I will be Friday night in Balboa Island, one of those beautiful islands in the whole United States. I want to thank the GMS team for putting this content together for me. I want to thank you for being absolute first class clients, friends, and entrepreneurs. You have a great day. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight and education to the breakthrough process, you can get my new Breakthrough Factor audio training for free today. It's seven hours of breakthrough content to assist you to break through in life and business. This training is currently for sale on my website for $497, but I'm giving it to you for free as a bonus to persuade you to try my new coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle. It's my proven system to teach everyday people and entrepreneurs how to break through to success. When you join the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle, you will participate in two private video coaching calls per month that you and my other members receive access to. On each call, the first half, I'll be teaching the skill of the week and giving you an assignment related to the topic. You will have the opportunity to post your homework in my private JCIC Facebook group. The Facebook group is a place where you can interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, and other JCIC members. On the second half of the coaching call, I'll be coaching JCIC members one-on-one -on -one live for you to observe. As a member, you can register for your own live one-on-one -on -one coaching session during this call. They're all recorded and posted in the JCIC members area for you to review while you are an active member. You will also receive a new member's welcome kit and my new Breakthrough Factor audio program absolutely free for joining. You can sign up today for just $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Thank you.